Okay, set up a little demonstration here. Uh, here we have uh, two supercapacitors. They are three farads each, 2.7 volts, wired in series, which gives you about one and a half farads, uh, but good for about five volts, which happens to be what the solar cell puts out. <coughs> uh, here we have an incandescent light bulb, just out of a bicycle light, of which more later. Uh, and two multimeters monitoring what's going on. So the one on the left here is monitoring the voltage coming out of the solar cell, which is currently disconnected. Uh, and the one on the right is measuring the current um, out of the solar cell and into the supercapacitors. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to connect the output from the solar cell to the, to the supercapacitors and let them start to charge. Oh yeah, just disconnect this for a moment. That's the connection to the light bulb. Okay, here we go. Okay, and pretty quickly what's going on is the voltage across the supercapacitor is starting to rise as 200 milliamps flows into it. <coughs> and that'll continue to climb pretty steadily. I'm going to let that go and it should peak at about 5 volts. The open circuit voltage of the particular solar cell I'm using is about 5 volts. Uh, so once we hit 5 volts uh, it should level out. Exciting stuff. And you can see that as we approach 5 volts, the current uh, drops down uh, as the sort of um, voltage across the capacitor increases and gets close to the voltage being supplied that the solar cell is capable of supplying. The current drops off. There's Ozzy coming into the lift to see what's going on. Okay, I've just hit five there now. It'll keep charging for another little bit. <coughs> what we're going to do now, though, is we're going to take this connection, which is the other side of that light bulb, and we're going to connect that across the uh, supercapacitor now to dump the charge the supercapacitor is stored into the bulb and watch what happens. I don't know how clear that is in camera, but it's actually fairly bright. Yeah, it's a very sunny day. You can see the sort of uh, voltage across the capacitors is dropping down. Uh, now the bulb has kind of gone out. Now we could disconnect the bulb. The cycle starts all over again. Okay, so once again now, the solar cell is charging away, charging up the super capacitors. Okay, this is the second instalment. This is it built up uh, on a breadboard. Under here we have just an ordinary Arduino, nothing special. The two super capacitors we saw earlier, uh, and a MOSFET. And the Arduino is running a program that's very simple. Uh, when the voltage in the capacitors rises above something just below five, I've forgotten exactly what it is. Uh, we'll have a look at the code in a second. It turns on the light, and we'll keep the light on until the voltage in the capacitors gets to be sort of something just below about 50 millivolts. That's all it does. Um, I'm doing this inside at the moment, um, partly because the PC is here, and partly to protect my delicate skin from the sun. Uh, the role of the solar cell for the moment has been fulfilled by the French power supply there, which is supplying five volts, current limited to 200 milliamps, which is about what we were getting from the, uh, from the solar cell. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to turn on the uh, power supply, which is the same effect as hooking up the solar cell. This window here actually reports the voltage or the output of the A3 pin that's monitoring the voltage on the supercapacitors. Uh, I'm just going to hit the power, I had to stop there for a second, I'm just going to hit the power now on the power supply, which is the same effect as hooking up the solar cell. And we can see straight away that the voltage measured uh, on the solar cell or across the supercapacitors begins to climb 268301334336. And on the power supply, we can see that the voltage it's consuming the full 200 milliamps uh, that the power supply is capable of giving. Uh, we're up to 608 now, uh, 694. When it hits 1000, the light should come on. Any second now. Uh, 
and there it is. So the Arduino read that uh, that the voltage or the output on the A3 pin that's monitoring the voltage hit a thousand, turned on the light, dumped the power into the light bulb. And it'll stay on then until that number drops down to, I think the current threshold is set to 100. And there it was, I just missed it, uh, it hit 99 and switched the light off. And now once again, uh, the capacitors are charging back up again. Uh, shortly it hit a thousand, at which time the light will come on again. And there it goes. Light burns. Gotta say, it's getting dimmer and dimmer as the voltage drops. And very shortly, then, the Arduino is going to see it's drop below the lower threshold and it's going to switch it off. There it is. And that's it. Okay, let's go and hook it up to a solar cell and see what happens. Okay, here we are back out in the sun again. Uh, and now this time, the solar cell is hooked up um, to the input to the super caps. Um, but there's just a power supply that's powering the Arduino. And it's working away as before, so the voltage is climbing steadily, 3.7 volts. There's the bulb hidden in there. Uh, charging away, and that gets close to five. Hopefully the bulb will come on. Any moment now. And there it goes. And the voltage drops quite sharply as the bulb discharges, or as the uh, supercapacitor charge discharges through the bulb. And the voltage will get uh, reasonably close to zero, at which time it should start climbing. There it is, it's climbing again actually already. And there it goes. Just as a fun little postscript here actually, um, that last run there, the Arduino itself has been powered by one of those little power banks. Um, but it turns out that the 5 volts, 200 milliamps output I'm getting out of those solar cells under the current bright sun is actually just about right for powering the Arduino. Um, so because I was only using one of the solar cells for powering the light bulb and charging the super caps, I hooked up the other to power the Arduino itself. So now the entire project is running um, totally solar powered. Both one of the cell cells supplying the power for the super caps that gets dumped into the bulb and the other actually driving the Arduino completely. Works perfectly. Here comes 5 volts, any moment now. And there it is. That's it.